cannot keep my eyes up open in the sun. It's too sunny. I bought a mic so you guys can hear me when it's windy, but I kind of don't like how it sounds, so I have to get used to it. So I didn't bring it with me. I like the beach. I just don't like the water. It's a lot of shells and seaweed. My sandals, oh well. Got the plane. Hi guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel. Let's try this again because I went out yesterday and it was way too many people outside. I felt like I couldn't vlog. Maybe no one was paying attention to me, but I felt like everybody was looking at me. <laughs> but today is a new day, so I came out to get some air so I wouldn't be overthinking in the house. And I'm using my new tripod and my new sandals. These are my new sandals, aren't they cute? I got them from Amazon. A topic that I've been stressing out about is my YouTube channel. I don't wanna sound ungrateful or like I'm complaining, but I've been making videos since last year, around this time actually, June last year, I think. I have, I think like 20 videos and I only have 78 subscribers. I don't know what am I doing wrong or what can I do to get my videos pushed to the public or like more seen. I'm trying not to get lost, like lose myself. I don't want to follow and do what everyone else is doing, but I don't mind taking tips or ideas that's similar, but I don't want everything I just don't want to follow behind everyone and feel like I'm not being myself. Because I want people to like me for me. So I struggle to make videos weekly because I just feel like my life is boring and I'm a boring person. I just came outside because if I didn't, my thoughts would eat me up. I didn't even eat anything, which is pretty bad. It's like almost four o'clock. Like when I'm overthinking, I can't even think about eating or anything. I just eat later, very, very later in the day. As soon as I wake up in the morning, it's just my mind is going. So I don't have any friends. Like I'm picky with people that I meet, but you know, it's always best to not invite everyone into your life because some people can make it worse. And I definitely don't want anyone coming into my life making it worse than it already is. That's just what's been on my mind. It feels so nice. If you see my videos, I'm mostly at the beach. I live right near the beach. Most of the time, it's very hard for me to even get out of the house. I feel uncomfortable when I go out. Like it's just this uncomfortable feeling being by myself. I wish I had friends or a friend where we could go to restaurants and shop and stuff together, but I don't. And for now, I just feel like it's best for me to learn to do things on my own and not depend on people and wait for that time to come, hopefully sooner than later. Friends, relationships, my life sometimes feels like I'm in a maze. Like every day feels the same. And I know I could change that, but I just feel stuck all the time. Maybe I should read my book. My recent video, I went to the library, but I couldn't find anything interesting. So, and I wanna go thrifting to find books. But this book that my mom got me a year ago, it's called The Black Girl's Guide to Healing Emotional Wounds. 
I don't read out loud, so I feel like I should read this book out loud. If you guys are not interested, you could just skip it. She walks into the double glass doors of the high-rise office building in downtown Washington, D.C. Her pointy black stiletto pumps tap lightly across the marble floors as she enters the elevator. You can hear her designer bag swish across the bottom of her pencil skirt as she passes through the hallway. Sarah has earned a bachelor's and master's degree from one of the nation's top historically black colleges and universities. She is well-spoken, sharp, and driven. Armed with a ph photographic memory, she has earned a high-paying position as a finance manager for one of the nation's largest accounting firms. Sarah oversees one direct report that she has a very transactional relationship with. Continuing her stroll down the hallway, she gives each of her colleagues in her direct report a perfunctory grin as she glides into her office. Her office is bright, spacious, and decorated with her sorority paraphernalia. Paraphernalia? I'm probably saying that wrong. As she settles in, Sarah opens her laptop, sips her on her coffee, and prepares for the day. Soon after, her boss walks in the door and stands by her desk. Good morning, Sarah. How was your weekend? He asks. She responds in an abrupt tone. It was great, Bob. How can I help you? Bob responds, I want to discuss a report that you created. I have some feedback for you. Um, he pauses. I'm not trying to be harmful, but please do not see this as an, an attack. I am simply, I simply want to help you grow within your role. She braces herself as she proceeds to provide her feedback. You put the wrong data in column X and you should sort by the numerator. As Bob is talking, Sarah becomes filled with anger. She is responsible for creating the report. She believes she should be free to do that without any input from Bob. After listening, she says, Bob, I have been doing these reports for a while and I know what I'm doing. That's why you hired me. If I need your help, I will ask. Bob shakes his head and leaves her office. Sarah is a tough girl. She does not allow anyone to correct her or disrespect her. I am very direct. It's how she normally introduces herself to new people, letting them know up front that she will not tolerate any level of disrespect. She says exactly what's on her mind without weighing the cost. Her colleagues deem her as intimidating and un unapproachable. Sarah makes it clear that she's not at work to make friends or even be friendly. She does not partake in company festivities, celebrations, or after hour networking events, which doesn't help her change her reputation. Sarah has been eyeing a position of director of finance with her company since it was posted internally. She reads the job description daily knowing that she meets each of the criteria for the role. She has the skills, education, and abilities. However, she keeps getting negative performance reviews because of her attitude and has even been written up for it. Sarah is known to be difficult to work with and confrontational. Although she enjoys the work she does, Sarah is unhappy with the company and has even turned bitter towards it. Because of her poor inter-office skills and heated confrontations, which resulted in human resources issues, she has been moved under three different managers. She has found each manager to be difficult to work with, and the working relationships have ended negatively. Since she feels that she has hit a brick wall with her employer. She wants to find a position with another company. However, this will be the third employer she has worked for in three and a half years. She feels stuck and that's causing her a great deal of anger. The good projects and cool assignments within the company are being given to other colleagues. Her boss and her boss's boss both seem to avoid her at all costs. She confides in one friend that tolerates her the most. Oh, most of her other colleagues seem to wish she was gone as well. I pick up vibes from people. And if I'm getting the vibes that you don't like me, I'm not going to go to a company dinner or hang out with employees at events and I feel like I'm being judged or no one likes me. 
not worth my time, I might as well go home. That's the way I think. Maybe it's not a good way to think, but I don't like confrontation and I'm not gonna, you know, let that person know, but I just avoid people like that because I just feel like it's negative and I don't like negativity. So I get Sarah, um, how she feels. When I'm outside, I will try to read this book and try to finish it because I'm thankful for my mom for buying me this book because she seen that I was going through a hard time. She also got me a self-love book. It's like a workbook and it asks me like my moods and how I feel. But yeah, I'm glad I got out today as most people probably are. I'm more comfortable at home because I feel safe and I feel like I get to avoid looks and judgment, but I can't run from my thoughts. Do you hear the cricket? Cricket, did I say it wrong? Do you hear the crickets? <laughs> I should have brought my speaker. I have nothing in here besides my water, my hat, just in case. I cannot take the heat any longer. And I bought my lip gloss with me. Gotta keep my lips moisturized. So I think you guys got to know me a little bit more. This is me guys, the loner, awkward girl with no friends. Ear hug, ear hug. I believe I don't wanna put on this hat. But I have no choice. I got off the house, made my video, and I wasn't overthinking. Now maybe I could eat. For those of you who stayed and watched the whole video, thank you so much. Don't be scared to comment on my videos. I'll respond back. And yeah, see you next time.